Hi, and welcome to Ben's Business Podcast, episode 72. Today is not going to be live, but I'm going to be sharing you the speech that I did at Valley Primary School about turning your dreams into reality. This also applies to adults as well as children, because after all, we are just grown up children. So we all have dreams, and in this video, in this speech that you watch, will be how to turn those dreams, your visions, your goals, into real physical, tangible reality. Do you, you recognise it? Moana. Moana, yeah. So I've watched that film about maybe a hundred times with my two-year-old daughter, and I love the film. It's a, it's a great film, but it's the fact that someone imagined and all, all the characters, all the, the islands, and, and actually put this into a movie. And that, that's what Walt Disney managed to do with all the films he created as well, and all the Disney films. They, they were able to think up a, a character and actually make them into cartoons and, and make movies out of them that millions of people are watching now. So that's, that's the point I wanted to show you. Again, a game a lot of you probably play is Fortnite, and my nephew plays it nonstop as well. But again, like if you look in the background, the explosions, all the guns, the, the, I think it's a, a battle bus or something. Um, so I've played this game and it's, it's a lot of fun. But when you, th you th really think about it, someone had to come up with that map that you play on. Someone had to come up with the hot air balloon, the, the, the battle bus, all the names for the characters and guns and everything. And people can put these ideas in their head into something that all, almost every one of the, us in this classroom, probably school, has played a game. Uh, and I think that's quite amazing. And it's, it's something that I'm doing with my life. I have ideas and actually put them into action. And I want to make sure everyone here does the same with their own dreams and put them, actually make them reality and make them their life. So you can create your own world. You can actually have, an idea, have a, this world idea in your head and decide to make that actually happen. Like this school wasn't here at one point, it's been built by someone that had a dream to make, uh, build, build schools here. So the, uh, just a wee bit about myself, uh, I, I've, I'm a father of two now, I've got a, this, this one down here is actually, <laughs> there's a child there, he's uh, four weeks old, and I've got a two-year-old daughter, and this is my partner Gemma. I'm currently creating a, a great lifestyle for myself and, and the job that I've created. I, I don't work for someone, I actually started my own business about... Uh, in 2011 and I started doing web design for and building websites for other businesses. I've also just started doing public speaking. I, uh, I actually, this was my audience, there was a, around 80 people in the room and I was speaking last Tuesday uh, in front of this audience and public speaking has been something I wanted to get into for a long time, uh, coming to schools and, and sharing anything that I've learned in my life and, and business. I like to come in and give back and, and share that with people. So I managed to get 80 people in a room, which was a, a very big achievement for me. But when I was back at school, the thought of public speaking was very scary to me. And I didn't think I would manage to do it. I am dyslexic. So I struggle with reading and maths. And there are certain things that I, a lot of people were doing really well in school when I was doing really bad. And I just thought, that I might have been stupid. Like that, that was kind of like what we label people who can't do maths and, and, and English, but that's wrong. I realized that over time when I started make, getting great life achievements, like setting my own business up, employing people, hiring people, doing public speaking to 80 people, 80 people in a room. And that's when I started to have more self-belief. And that's, again, if you're, if you're not finding school very easy and you see other people finding it easy, it's about realizing your strengths and your weaknesses. So there's a saying that by a scientist who says, if you're to judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it would go about the rest of its life thinking it was stupid. So does everyone get what that means? Just a show of hands for who gets that. Yeah. So it's, the idea of it is that a monkey was born to climb a tree, but a fish was born to swim in the sea. And if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, uh, you're, you're judging it by the wrong ability. So like, I'm not good at maths, but I, I, I'm, I'm better at public speaking, I'm better at sharing and teaching people 
than I am at math. So that's what I do. I'm, I'm not going to be a math teacher. I'm not going to be a scientist in, in, in terms of using mathematical science. Uh, I'm not going to do that because it's not my strength. So uh, again, I want you to think about your dreams, but also think about your strengths and, your, and even your weaknesses and make sure that you focus on those things that you're tal talented at, those things that you're naturally born good at. As long as you enjoy it as well, so you have to love it and you have to have it as a, a, a vision and as a dream of what you want and, and then find the strength in, in that area of what you'll enjoy, such as if you're good at football, you can become a footballer. If you keep persisting and, and try your best to get into the Celtic or whatever club you want. So again, I was just speaking uh, Turbine and uh, Fair Isle just uh, a couple of weeks ago. So again, public speaking was something I always wanted to do. I was a wee bit scared to do it, but I went and did it anyway. And now I'm speaking at lots of schools and I got invited here because they found out that I did a speech at uh, Fair Isle, which the, the children enjoyed. This is uh, where I actually work sometimes. This is in my kitchen. You can see the microwave there. Um, I'm, this is one in the morning. I'm eating jam on toast. And the reason I'm showing you that is because I can work from wherever I want. So here's actually, most people's office is at their work. But this is actually my office. So I can, I can take my laptop out and stick it on this desk and I can work there today if I wanted. So that's what I love about my lifestyle. I can do whatever I want where I want, when I want, with who I want. And uh, that's an option that you have as well. If you want to be a web designer, you want to work in, in ICT and on computers, it, it gives you a lot of freedom. Like Michael was able to come out here today as well. And, and Michael's just started his own business, which is a, a great move just last week. So I, I probably encouraged him to do that, but it was something he dreamed himself that he wanted to do and he made happen and you're able to do things like this and, and work from wherever you want. And I, I don't have to be here today. I actually agreed to come out today, take time out of my business to come and speak to you today. So I've taken time out of making money in my business to grow my business, to come here and just share some of the things that I've learned from my life. I want to encourage everyone to do as well after school is continue your own self-education. And that might not, like if you don't like reading, there's all, the there's all other option of audiobooks, but continuously educate yourself, even outside the school, because that's what's really served me in being able to start a business and be of value to other people. I've continued to educate myself and, and learn new things every day. And I just love reading books. I, I actually read non-fiction books, which is not like Harry Potter. It's more um, your factual books and learning about people's lives, biographies, uh, autobiographies, and uh, history and psychology. So I, I love reading, and I didn't like reading at school, but when I realized how important it was for me, I, I took a, probably about four or five years out of my life just after school. I was not going to study or read another book again. And then I, I changed my, my mind and realized that reading was actually really important for uh, developing your, your brain, developing your mind. So this is my, all the videos I've been producing. Uh, like someone asked me, that I've got a thousand subscribers. I got a badge for that just recently on, uh, on YouTube for getting a, a thousand subscribers. So I technically am a YouTuber. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't really call myself that, but what I, what I love is teaching. I love doing this. Um, and as a byproduct, I get on video often because I like to share my, my knowledge and experience. So YouTube and Facebook Live. Facebook Live allows me to stream like on live TV uh, onto Facebook. So anyone who's on my, my, on my Facebook follow me can see me and ask questions live on Facebook. So I answer people's questions live and I also upload those videos onto YouTube. So I've built up a, a massive following on social media and on YouTube and, and people find my videos really valuable. And I keep uploading them at least, I do one every week at 2 p.m. on a Wednesday. So it's a Ben's Business podcast. Um, and if you want to find any of the videos, it's on YouTube, just search my name, Ben Lane, which I'll, I'll show you at the end. But one of the things I had to do before I started doing all of this was, like I said at the beginning, we have to have courage, which is overcoming fear. Fear stands for false expectations appearing real. That's, it's not the exact definition, but false expectations appearing real. Before we actually go and do something, we 
we think of what happened to us in the past when we did something similar, and we worry about that happening again. So that's the, that's the problem with, uh, with uh, fear, is it's not real, but it feels so real that it stops us from going and doing things that are un unknown to us. And you just have to realise that you'll be okay, and, and you'll, 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 overcome that, you'll overcome it. But it, the fear will actually stop people in their tracks. But what we have to do is just go through the fear and do what, what's in your dream and actually go ahead and do it. Because if fear stops you, then you never know dreams on the other side. And that's this, this point here. So I've created this lifestyle for myself. This is my daughter helping me on my podcast. Uh, but your dreams are on the other side of fear. And that's the point I wanted to make today. So you have to actually, like, even as an adult, uh, even your, your teacher, your teachers are, are experience fear in their own life. So unfortunately, I've got bad news for you and I've got good news for you. The bad news is that you'll always have fear in your, in your life for the rest of your life. And that's, that's the bad news. But the, the good news is you, you, fear isn't real. Uh, as long as it doesn't kill you, as long as it's not going to hurt you in, in, in any way, you should always go ahead with what you want to do, as long as it's not dangerous because your dreams are on the other side of fear. So if you've got a dream, such as being a footballer uh, or a vet um, or an author, then when you go to try and pursue and make that happen, you'll actually get a wee bit of fear will come in because you've never been a footballer. You've never tried, tried to sign up for a team or uh, wrote a book before. So you'll get some fear that will kick in, just like me coming here today. I got a bit of fear today to come here and speak because I didn't know what it was going to be like. So when we go into the unknown, like I don't, I've never been in a school before, so it's unknown to me. I, I, I've actually developed a way of courage to overcome my fear. So the fear was much less today than it was when I was at Fair Isle. And that was the second time I spoke at a school. The time before that, it was, I was much more fearful. But courage is the muscle you need to build up to overcome the fear. So again, you can create your own world. If you dream it, you take action on it, and when you're taking action on it, you overcome fear. So does anyone have any questions about what I've spoke about today? Just put your hand up if you've got any questions. And if you've got any fear of putting your hand up, put your hand up. <laughs> yeah? What's your most views on one of your videos? Uh, there's a video I think is about to reach 200,000 views, and that's just uh, one of the videos, yeah. So there's, there's a few of them that went basically viral, um, and that's just... I've probably uploaded thousands of videos over time. I've been doing it for about 10 years, so every so often one will go viral because it, it hits all the strings and everyone, everyone loves it and it gets momentum. So like, if, you get, if you get over about 1,000 a thousand a views, it tends to get shown more on social media and then it just snowballs. So that's what I've realized with videos. Does anyone do YouTube videos here? or stream on, what's it, Twitch, I think, yeah. What's that? There's Twitch. Yeah. A lot of them were doing that at Fair Isle, they're, they're stars on, on YouTube as well. <laughs> Your YouTube channel, at the point where you're making money out of it, or are you still doing Yeah, it well, when, yourself, yeah, I do, so I have the option to get paid for it. But I don't have the adverts on because if you, if you have a lot of views, like a video getting 200,000 views, YouTube approach you to be a partner with them and offer to pay you money. So there's people making millions off of being a YouTuber. But that's not the reason I'm being a YouTuber. Obviously, I'll, I'll take the money if they'll give me it. Um, but um, I've not st I didn't stick adverts on because I just wanted my videos to be ad-free because you have the option as a, when you're a YouTuber. So you can switch the ads off and you don't get paid, or you can switch ads on and you'll get paid for it. Um, so I, I don't have ads on yet. I might switch them on when I want to make some money from YouTube, but I think um, for now I, I'm happy just to have no ads on it. Uh, there has been a time where I got paid for, for some of the videos uh, for having the ads on, but again, I, I switched that off because I tried to make money from a web design business. It's, it's a, like a, it's pennies per view, but if you get if you get millions of views, like you get a lot of money. You make you make millions. So 
if you're making really good video, uh, the key is just to make really good engaging content that um, holds people's attention. So like I found today as an example, uh, quite hard to keep your attention because there was a few people coming in and out. Um, I, that's, a, that's an example, you, you, on video it's the same thing, like people will have distractions when they're watching videos, they'll have like two, two minutes, a two minute video and their brother or their sister comes in the door 30 seconds in and unless that video is really, really good, they'll get distracted and start speaking to, their, to them. So the videos have to be really good so they've, it's got everyone's attention and that's, that's the key to getting millions of views and getting paid millions on YouTube. That's what I've learned as a public speaker is holding people's attention. So when yous were starting to get distracted, I was trying to grab your attention again. Uh, and that's a skill you have to learn when you're even doing videos. You have to know and look at the data that YouTube give you to tell you um, people are not paying attention to this video because it'll tell me one video is only getting watched until one minute and then there's a drop off. So I'll start to change and make, try and grab their attention a wee bit more after one minute. But mainly, if you keep videos short, like one minute long, that usually keeps people's attention. How long have you been doing YouTube for? Uh, ten years, roughly. So, I've not been producing as much as I should be, but more recently I've been doing one video a week. Uh, for I'm on episode number 70, so that's 70 weeks. So over a year of doing a video consistently every week. And that's the key as well as for YouTubers is to be consistent, consistency. So next, uh, just Wednesday, see I don't know what day it is when I run my own business, <laughs> but on Wednesday, when Wednesday comes at 2 p.m., I have to do a video because I'm going on Facebook Live. So I, I don't have a choice. So by Tuesday or Wednesday morning, I better decide what I'm going to talk about um, on Wednesday. Uh, so that's one of the ways that keeps me consistent because I've promised to every, all my viewers I'm going to be live with them and they're going to ask me live questions at 2 p.m. on Wednesday so I can't get out of that and sometimes I can't I really, really don't want to do it but after I've done it I always feel better for doing it because that's me now at 70 videos for 70 whole weeks and um, you had a question Um, I, I think I wanted to be an astronaut, actually. That was what I wanted to be when someone asked me what... But I think I've got what I wanted to do. Like, I, my dad used to show me uh, videos of entrepreneurs, investors, and business owners. Um, there was one guy on this video, he was sitting by his pool in the sun in the Bahamas, and he was retired at 35. And I said, I want to do that. So that's what I'm working towards. I'm not 35 yet, so I've still got a chance to make that happen. <laughs> I'm on track. Any other questions? Yeah? How did you get into web designing? I originally was doing marketing for my dad. My dad's always been an entrepreneur, and he used to make me watch a lot of uh, videos when I was younger. My brother and my sister weren't interested in those videos, but I was always interested, so... I really originally just had an interest for business and starting my own business. So I've always been interested in starting my own business, but when an opportunity came up that I realized I could make £300, for example, for building my first website, I built a website for a roofer. So the roofer paid me £300, and that's when I still had a job. And then I thought, well, I'm just going to start a business now because now I know I can, what I can charge for it. So that's how it started. Actually, just the first payment was what opened my eyes up to realize you can make a lot of money doing websites. So if you can learn coding and you can learn to do, use, use coding to build websites, you can get paid quite well for that and you can start to work for yourself and live a similar uh, lifestyle to myself. What else have you done websites for? Many different companies. So I've done business, uh, websites for a Canadian shipping company. Um, the most exciting one I've did is probably uh, there's a speaker and an investor down in, in London he, he's a really quite a, quite famous on the internet and I built a website uh, uh, I just finished building a, a membership website for him so he's got uh, he's selling courses within the website so it's a really complex website but that's probably one of the most exciting ones I've, I've built to date uh, for a big speaker and, and entrepreneur successful business owner yeah 
Um, it's probably the, like what I showed you there, the, the, the freedom to, to decide what I want to do. So to make the choice today to come in here and, and share my time with, with everyone here is a, is a really important thing for me because if I had a boss, I would have to ask the boss and the boss might say no. So that's what I really love about doing this is I'm able to make my own decisions and I can take, I can take tomorrow off and spend it with my family. Uh, and that's, a, that's the options I've created for myself. But it's, it's not been easy, but it's been, worth, it's been worth it because now I've got to a position where I, I, I can make these uh, choices without restriction. Yep. It's usually only about 15 minutes every week, so I try and keep it short because I realise that attention spans not long on the internet. <laughs> no, w one minute is actually the ideal length of a, a video. That's why Instagram kind of keep your videos to one minute. Yeah. My favorite thing is to travel the world and travel nature. Travel the world and travel in, in nature. Because money doesn't money comes back, but time doesn't. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So I, I think that it's good to have, I was speaking about this yesterday with Michael, um, there's a thing called Ik Igai, Ikigai, which means, can you name all, all, all four of them? Uh, it's basically a Japanese phrase meaning like your purpose in life and it consists of four different things and that's what you love, what you're good at, what you can be rewarded for and what the world needs. Yeah. It's like all those things so mixed together. That's your mission, that can be your, like, your life's purpose. So it's like you're saying, traveling the world while making money, because you need to you need to be able to fund things for taking trips to different places, so you're not maybe hitchhiking. You can travel and uh, like travel on first class if you want, but uh, it ma money makes life easier, especially in this in this society in, in in the UK. But if you want to travel other countries, money's not as important. So I agree with you in a, in a lot of ways. So I started my business in 2011, so, um, but I, I've probably been doing web design and, and, and marketing for about 11 years, um, maybe longer. I've been studying this stuff for, since I was 14, so for a long time. Yeah. Um, I would love to do stuff for Walt Disney. That would be cool. Um, I've never really thought about that, but it's probably something worth thinking about because um, it doesn't come up as like a dream for me. Like I need to work with certain companies. I, I guess like that's not my dream. So like I, it doesn't really matter who I work with. Um, but there's certain people I would like to to associate and, and work with. Like uh, you probably you might not know them because they're my my idols. Uh, you'll have different idols from me. So there's, there's people I've read their books, like certain authors, there's business owners, I would love to spend time with them. Uh, so therefore I would like to work with them in some way. Um, and that's why I created the podcast because it allows me the access to these people because they want to, they've got, they write a new book and they want to um, publish it and, and promote it. So by coming on my podcast, I've got 1,000 uh, subscribers. I've actually got almost uh, 2,500 uh, members in a thing called Ben's Business Book Club, which is a Facebook group. So if they come in there, they'll get a lot of eyeballs, a lot of people seeing their new book and they might go and buy it. So by creating the podcast and e interviewing expert guests, I'm able to attract those people that I want to work with to me. So that's kind of why I started doing the podcast. So that is slightly you're answering your question but like in my own way that I've got my own idols we all have our own idols that you might not know who the idols I won't even mention their names but Walt Disney maybe would be one <laughs> yeah yeah I think I got that badge about yeah I got a so like what I, what I, I've realized is um, like some of you here in, in the other school that a lot of people want to be youtubers what the best advice I could give to you if you want to be a youtuber is ask yourself why you want to be a YouTuber. Because um, I ended up being a YouTuber because I wanted to teach. And I wanted to share lessons and I wanted to basically make people 
make people rich and happy as well. Because like I'm on my own path, I'm happy, and I want to teach other people how to be happy. Um, I'm making a lot of money from my business, so I want to teach other people how to make money. So that was my vision and my goal and my dream. And by that being my dream, by it's almost a byproduct of what's happened as a result of doing that and being on video is I've got a YouTube channel and I've got uh, a thousand subscribers. So it's just an idea that like I, I think. People, if you want to, if you want something, uh, find out the real purpose and dream of what you're, what you're wanting as well, behind being a YouTuber. Yeah? What was your first job? My first job was, I worked for Sky, uh, taking phone calls for cust angry customers. <laughs> I quit after six months, because it wasn't fun. Wait, uh, how much money were you earning per year? At that job? Not a lot because it was only part. It was only the weekend, so uh, probably one percent of what I'm making now with my business. So. Did you get free Sky TV and broadband though? I got a discount. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I just got angry customers and no benefits. <laughs> okay. Any more questions? Can I say thank you so much? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for your questions. So me and Michael are just back from our, a speech that I did up at Valley Primary School in Kirkcaldy. So I was talking about how people can turn dreams into reality and using Walt Disney as an example. Uh, I did this a similar speech at Fair Isle at Primary School up at uh, Temple Hall in Kirkcaldy as well. So I've practice the speech enough time so I didn't have to do a lot of preparation for this one which is quite helpful. So that's the third school I've been into now, at, uh, kind of back to back, going to primary schools and speaking to young sort of six, uh, primary six and uh, primary seven. The primary seven class were really, they were, they were really enjoying it um, and I found the uh, uh, children are actually a lot easier than I realised to, to speak to, they, they, they really listen which is a really good thing.